Do, do you think um, stripping away the international rugby has helped you kind of find enjoyment in the game? Again? Is, is that anything to do with it? Big time, yeah. Yeah, that was a big factor on, um, on my enjoyment towards it. I wasn't, I just wasn't enjoying it, you know. I wasn't happy, I suppose, going to national camp, meeting, meeting up with, um, you know, I'd kind of stay in my room all day and things, things like that. I was just trying, you know, uh, it wasn't a good place for me mentally going there towards the end. Uh, so um, that definitely pl- plays a big part in, in, in the season. And um, yeah, I suppose I, I'm very, very happy now, you know, so I suppose it all worked out and it was maybe meant to be like that for me. But yeah, it's probably a little bit sad as well, I suppose. But. The, um, the Heineken Cup uh, final against Exeter. Mm. So, you know, how are you feeling going into that? Like, I think you guys are yet to win a big European trophy. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, we have um, yet to win. Uh, it's a huge, huge ambition as a president. We have two big, massive posters, one of the top 14, one of the, the Champions Cup in the training mm. centre. So we're constantly reminded of it, you know, and, and especially of late, the, the deeper we've gotten into the competition, the coaches are definitely mentioning it more and uh, it's all about the first star on the jersey, the first star above the crest and, and yeah. Um, yeah, there's a huge ambition. As a spectacle, I cannot wait to, to see that. Um, yeah. It, obviously, I'm on the fence about who wins as well. Mm, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be very, very close, yeah. Um, so, I'm who confident. Will you be, um, sorry, Carol. No, I, I'm just saying I'm confident if we play to the full... You know, if we play to our to the best of our ability, genuinely, I, I, I don't see anyone beating us, you know. But that, that's, uh, a lot of it comes down to us, you know. We have to be on the money in everything we do. And if we are, then we're incredibly hard to beat. Uh, before we let you go, Zebo, I'm just going to bring in another big name um, who you'll hear from loads on the offload. Um, so there's 97 international appearances for Wales and the Lions combined. Uh, name a country, and there's a good chance that this legend is probably played in it. Uh, welcome, Jamie Roberts. Hi guys, how are you? And ladies? How are we? Oh, very well, very well. Train today in the pissing down rain. Are you still playing? Uh, exactly, I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to answer this for me. Look, if you were going from Newport to Cape Town, I'd get it. But Cape Town to Newport, you need to talk <laughs> us through that decision. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit different, mate. I haven't... Do you know what? I think I've only been to Newport twice since... Being back, I'm living in Cardiff. We train up in um, Ashramanach, which is 20 minutes north of Cardiff. Uh, and we, I've actually, we're, uh, first game Friday night, uh, home down Rodney Parade. So, yeah, it's a bit of a different change of scenery, Dylan. Uh, I'll be Jeez, you don't you. look too excited about it. My Cape Town, man. Jesus. I, there's not many cities better than Cape Town. Well, look, we're going to, um, I'm going to get you to talk a bit more about your return to Wales with Dragons in a minute. But the reason why we've actually kept Zebo on the line is because I actually wanted to get a joint story from the two of you about one of the greatest Lions forfeits in history, uh, Simon's in 2013. So I think we've all seen the video. Um, and Jamie, I think you're the one that's actually holding the phone while it all happened. So I suppose, guys, you're just going to have to Tell us the full story, you know, set the scene. Oh, God. Uh, so you what remember, did you get punished for, mate? It was, yeah. Were you part of the, the committee? I wasn't. I just had a speaker because I had my both speaker seat in the uh, meeting. So I ended up yeah. just plugging it into that so the lads could hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember some members of the committee coming up to me beforehand, before this big fines meeting. I think it would have been Connor and, and, and Hibbs and um, maybe Rory Best asking me for, um, you know, a, a recommendation for the, the final dice roll. And I was the one who actually came up with the, the whole concept of calling your coach and, and stuff. And they were like, come on, we need your help to, to get Wady or someone like this, you know, what can we do? And I was like, oh, get him, you know. So obviously the irony of it all, I end up rolling a six for... Um, <laughs> as a punishment which was shocking but um before that it was um on the pitch against the rebels i think and it was um there was about 79 minutes left or gone on the clock and it was conor murray at the time who was at the base of a rock and um he was real nervous he had his head down muffling trying to get the ball out and I could, uh, I could see him panicking a little bit thinking the game was up and he was looking around for somebody to tell him what to do and 
I was like, it's up, it's up, kick it out, kick it out. And there was still about 15 seconds left. And she knew you know, it's, it's even worse, you know, when, when he kicks it out and he gives it the, the jog, you know, the, the one or two, three paces. <laughs> and he looks around and he's like, hey, well, where is everybody else? And he looked straight at me and he wanted to kill me. Oh my God, I've never seen a man got so angry so quick. And the ref called him back. He was so embarrassed. It was 10 out of 10, to be fair, yeah. yeah and can you just, can you state for those people who potentially have been living under a rock since 2013, what exactly was the punishment? The punishment was to phone your, your head coach at the time, your club coach, and request the captaincy. So, yeah, it was tricky. Thankfully, I had a really sound head coach at the time with Monster and Rob Penny. And, um, yeah, he, he didn't take too much of it. He, he knew it was a bit of crack, I think, in the end, so. Worked out well, but yeah, Connor's still uh, embarrassed by the situation, so it's good. Oh, I'd imagine so. Um, well, look, guys, I can't wait to hear plenty more from you two over the course of the season. Um, I suppose, like, should we try and maybe get the dice game rolling as well? Like, do you think it would work on the podcast? Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Jamie, what do you think? Yeah, we need decent forfeits. I'm sure between the three or four of us, we can rack up some, some decent ideas. 